Right guys, what we're we talking about today. Today we're talking about one of my scientific experiments called the perpetual turbine. It's something that I've been working on for about a year. Something that I hope is going to change how we produce energy and basically revolutionise the energy industry. It's quite a big deal and I think I've got it right. After a year of trying, I think I've finally got it right. Um, I'll show you the experiment. Basically, what I've got here is a turbine. This is a wind turbine, to be specific. And what it is, it's connected. So you see the battery, and you can't miss that. Um, this is a 12 volt. This is a 12 volt battery, and this is a 12 volt electric motor. All right, and this is connected to a drive shaft, which spins the turbine. Now this is a wind turbine. So normally, it'd be spun by wind. So you'd have propellers fitted onto this. You'd have it outside, and it'd be the wind that spins it. But what I'm going to do is use an electric motor to spin the turbine. So what you've got is a small motor. It's only a little motor spinning a big turbine, well, bigger turbine. See how the motor's small, yet the turbine's big. And then that creates energy, electrical energy, which then goes into this um, wind charge controller, which is basically a battery charge controller, which will then top the battery back up. So the battery is running the motor, spinning the turbine, and then it's getting topped back up by, by the spinning turbine. And in addition to that, this is, this is a speed controller, that's just a speed controller for the motor itself. Um, but in addition to that, I'm also going to run these two electromagnets off the battery. So what we're trying to see if we can do is we can run all of this with the battery not actually lose any voltage or only maybe lose a tiny bit of voltage or hopefully even have more voltage because it's continually getting charged up by the wind charge controller. Now, that might not sound like much, you know, it's only a small scientific experiment, but that would prove that net positive energy is possible. All you've got to do is bolt a motor for, via a drive shaft to a turbine. The other, I mean, if it does work, if it does work, the other thing you can do is on this drive shaft that's bolted to the electric motor, the spinning shaft of the electric motor, the other thing you could do is put a cog on here that spins multiple turbines around it to create even more energy. And then maybe you could have another ring of turbines around that, all with cogs on their drive shafts. So there'd be um, a cog on the end of this drive shaft, and then the, the turbines would actually have cogs on them. I'll talk about that more later, maybe, uh, in a diagram or something, but it's pretty straightforward. The drive shaft on the motor would have a cog that spins other cogs, all connected to turbines, and maybe more, you have another ring of turbines around that, and then maybe a ring of motors around that with cogs on them, all spinning loads of turbines to create net positive energy. It's something, like I said, I've been working on for a year. This might not look like much. So you've been working on that for a year. Yeah, well, I had to learn about science. And I had to learn about how we how turbines work. And I, had to, you know, I, had to, I did a lot of failed experiments. But I'm thinking I've got it right now. The first thing we need to do on this test is initially measure the voltage inside of the battery. And we do that with... This tool here, which is called a multimeter. See the multimeter reading, I don't know if you can see it. So I'm measuring the battery now. 12.83 is apparently the voltage. 12.83. So we're hoping for a voltage that is close to that by the time we finished. We ideally want it to be close to 12.83 or maybe a tiny bit below or maybe the same or maybe even a little bit above. That's what we're looking for. Next thing to do is begin the test. So I've got to connect all the wires up 
Uh, connect the wind turbine charge controller first. So, go for that. Connect the electromagnets. Connect the motor last. Right, and then I've got to connect the electric motor. Okay. So it's spinning, as you can see. And that actually turns on, I don't know if you can see a green light on here, just there. So the wind turbine charge controller is on. Speed control is 75%. Um, we've got electromagnets which are electrified. Also all running off the battery obviously. Yeah, so they're, they're drawing current. Those, those two magnets are drawing current and obviously the motor is too. But this is creating current and it's going through this wind turbine charge controller. Now we'll run this test for 15 minutes. Um, I'll put my my uh, phone there so hopefully you can see everything that's going on. You can see the speed controller, see everything. Now you might say, why, Jemby, why are you doing this? Well, because we can't keep burning fossil fuels, we need to find different ways of producing energy. And I think the answer is to simply use electric motors, which you can scale up far bigger than this, to spin turbines. Like I say, you could spin multiple turbines potentially with a cog, a cog system, a cog on the end of the turbine and a cog on the end of the motor drive shaft spin numerous turbines and then that should definitely make net positive energy um, so it's something that is important for humanity to try to solve this energy problem um, so actually Magnets, they're still magnetised as you can see, and they will be drawing current. Net positive energy is like the holy grail of energy production. It's something that humanity does need to try to solve, solve this problem. So... I've worked hard on it because I didn't know anything about electrics. Um, so I had to learn everything from scratch over the last year. And yeah, it's been tough. You know, I've had a lot of failed experiments, I've done a lot of stuff wrong and stupid. I'm hoping now I've finally cracked it practice problem. Obviously if you want to skip to the end of the uh, video. So You say, well, you know, why has no one ever thought of doing this before? Get an electric motor and just bolting it to a turbine, you know, via a drive shaft. Um, well, I don't know exactly. See, what I'm trying to do here with the electric motor, you've got this is electromagnetic rotation. 
discovered by my favourite scientist, Michael Faraday, in the 1820s. So that's what we're doing there. Now this, the turbine, is electromagnetic induction, discovered by my favourite scientist as well, Michael Faraday, in the 1830s. So this technology was discovered in the 1820s, this was the 1830s. But in all that time, I don't think anyone's ever thought of taking an electromagnetic rotation and electromagnetic induction and coupling them together like this. We use wind or steam to spin turbines. In a lot of power stations, they use steam. So what they'll do is they'll heat fossil fuel, uh, set fossil fuels on fire to heat water to then create steam, to then pump the steam in to spin a turbine or they use wind, wind power. Um, it's the same in a nuclear fission. A nuclear fission power station, they do the same thing. They, uh, it's just to you know, create heat, create, create a nuclear reaction to create heat, to then heat water to create steam to then pump that into spinning the turbine. Um, because I think the more logical solution is to actually use electromagnetism itself via electromagnetic rotation to spin the turbine. I think that's the way to do it. I'm going to take a seat now and shut out for a bit. Let the test run. The alarm should sound on the phone. Hopefully we get a voltage score on the multimeter that's close to where we started at 12.83. Remember we are running the two electromagnets at the same time, so don't forget that. And they, are, they, they will be drawing current constantly. You might look at this and think, well, how could this solve the energy crisis? Well, it's a small scientific experiment to prove. I mean, all of this could be scaled up. You could have far, far bigger motors, far bigger turbines. I've just done it on a small scale to keep it cheap, to keep the experiment, you know, cheap, to prove the theory. Michael Faraday would do the same thing. He'd build experiments to prove scientific theories we keep them very small scale, very cheap. Um, that way you can, if you, do a, if you do do an experiment, if it fails, you're not that bothered because it never costs much to put together. So, yeah. So it's just a small scale experiment at the moment. I've got a lot of spare time on my hands because obviously I do oil investing now which does give me a lot of spare time so I thought this would be a productive use of my time to try to see if I could do anything to help solve the energy crisis where this situation where we're just, um, you know, can't keep burning fossil fuels at the rate that we are. That's the great problem. We need energy as an economy and society, we need energy. It's just how do we create it without damaging the environment?
I think this is the answer. I think this is a solution that's been staring us in the face for the last 150 years at least. Maybe a bit longer. I can't say it's been much fun trying to do this over the last year, but I just felt it's important to do. Considering, you know, the amount of spare time that I have on my hands. I mean, I could just sit in crude oil and, you know, crude oil and less so I'm doing okay, you know, for money and that. Could have just sat back, I guess. And done nothing, but I thought I've got to try. Got to try and figure out the solutions to the problems we face. As a, as a society and as a species on on energy. So let's hope I'm right. Let's hope I'm right and this is the answer. And if I'm not, let's hope someone else can figure it out. Check the electromagnets are still working. Should be. See, it's the Allen key stands up. Yeah. It only needs to keep the battery topped up more or less, you know. Um, to run maybe other things off it. This could be the answer to creating um, an e-car that can charge itself as it drives along. So what you'd have on an e-car, like a Tesla, is this setup where you have a battery, a small battery like this, because e uh, Teslas have huge batteries, a small one, so it doesn't cost as much as the Tesla running a um, bigger bigger setup than this, a bigger motor and bigger turbine, but then that creates all the electric you need for the motors that spin the wheels. Just like how, here, how we're trying to create the electric for the electromagnets so they stay electrified. So you could then have a, um, and then at the same time, the battery's continually being topped up. So you could have a Tesla that you never need to, um, charge it charges as it drives along as, as soon as you turn it on it's, it's charging itself and then that's better than having a petrol car because obviously a petrol car you've got to keep filling it with petrol and that's expensive um, so that you know that that could be a great thing you could have these in power stations uh, supplying power to people's homes. You see the electric that's coming out here, out of these red wires, that could be sent to the power grid. Well, you know, to power your house, the electrics of your house.
And if you're into mountain biking, potentially you could have one of these on um, an e-bike uh, to just keep topping up the battery on your e-bike. So then, you know, you know, like you've got an e-bike and the battery runs out of charge. Well, with this, which I call the perpetual turbine, potentially, you know, it just keep it just keep the battery topped up for you, so you never run out of charge. Just keep going as long as the motor keeps spinning the turbine, you're fine. Obviously a motor, a motor could wear out. But then you could have a spare motor that you can bolt in. So what we're going to do at the end of the test, coming towards the end of the test now. So we're going to disconnect all the wires and then use the multimeter again to um, test the voltage of the battery and see how it measures against the before voltage reading, which was So it's the um, end of the test. Turn off the uh, speed controller. Just quickly uh, disconnect all of this. So now what we've got to do is we've got to test the voltage on the battery. Remember we had 12.83. I'm hoping for a good result. 12.7 so it has dropped a tiny bit but I'm hoping it would have kept it topped up we potentially could have spin, spun the turbine faster but like I say you could have one motor spinning multiple turbines um, we've only got we've only got a, a motor spinning one turbine at a minute 12.71 so that's the reading test it again 12.72 that time. I'll say it's 7.1. Now what we might want to do is just leave this for a second, leave it for a few minutes and test it again. So if we leave it 12.71, we might find, just because it's being used, it might top itself back up naturally. That's the theory I've got. So we're going to leave the timer running again. We'll go leave it running for how long? Ten minutes. Oh no, that's coming kind of three three hours ten. Leave it running for that. And I'll test it again. I'll test the voltage again. It may well be. I mean it is slightly down. But like I say, you could have this motor spinning. Multiple turbines. Because the battery's been used, it might have just depleted it back, but sometimes I think, I've found, when I test this battery sometimes after using it, the voltage can drop. And then I test it like, you know, a bit later, and it's popped back up again. So we'll see. I've found that before, sometimes, like I say, 
you uh, drain the battery a little bit, test the voltage, then test the voltage the next day, and the, the voltage has gone up, gone up from where it was. So we'll see. The reason I'm just let, letting the um, timer run, I'm trying to do this all in one shot with the camera to show you that I'm not trying to con you in any way. This isn't a trick or a con. I'm trying to pull off net positive energy. And I think I'm pretty much there. I do feel the voltage will be a little bit higher on the um, on that reading. Was it 12.71? I think it was. I think it'll be a little bit higher than that. Ideally, we'd like to get back to 12.83. Ideally. So if you want to skip to the results, please do. I hope this works. I hope so. I was trying to do it with a much smaller battery. Um, I was getting some decent results. See how big that battery is. I was trying to do it with a battery about the about a fifth of the size of that, or maybe a sixth. Um, and I got some decent results. So I've just got this battery. I've just got this big battery to do it. Like I was trying to get some better results, but I've got some pretty good results, to be fair, already with a little battery. Is that actually that battery you saw me putting the, uh, the recycling? The recycling tip at Frankly. In the last video. Oh, we got 
children that the time I say. Three minutes. Remember, this is a trickle charge as well. There might be a way of just like you just send the electric as much electric as, as you want. There might be like um, cause this just wants to trickle charge the battery at a slow rate. So, they might be able to change this setup here so you get the full electric coming out of this, possibly, and just sending it into the power grid or into the motors and spin. Spin, spin the wheels for a Tesla or other e-car. I'm certainly not wasting my time. Um, you know, I do do oil investing, which gives me quite a bit of free time. But I try to use that time productively, doing things like this. Okay, put that down, try again with the multimeter, see if we get a better uh, reading after leaving the battery to rest. Twelve point seven seven. So that's higher than twelve point seven one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave it for another ten minutes. We were 12.7. Just test that again. 12.77. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to write that second score down. 12.77. So before it's 12.83. It's gone that. So it's, it just needs to leave the battery to rest. So leave it for another 10 minutes. Let's go again. Like I said, that's why I'm trying to do it all in one shot to prove I'm not some, you know, scammer guy or trying to wind you up or nothing. I'm not like that. People in the who've met me in the mountain bike community know I'm a guy that's, you know, as honest as the day is long. I'm a truthful guy, so I'll just tell it how it is. 
I'm not trying to con anyone, but I am doing it in one shot to try and really prove that. It should, I think the battery should get back to 12.83 um, once it's given enough um, time to, you know, rest. Just because it was down a bit, just because we just took it off it, all that, all that stuff, we took it just off. It's given enough time to rest, it will pick itself back up. I think so, I think that's going to happen. See if we get a better score. We're up to 12.77. I would like to get back to 12.83 if possible. Yeah, I've enjoyed learning about science. Um, I actually read this book. I'll show you the book. Um, I don't know if you can see it. I read this book. Um, and it's a book on a man called Michael Faraday. It says Michael Faraday there. I'm trying to find a picture of him. There he is. There he is. That's the guy. Michael Faraday is my favourite scientist. And he was actually, this guy, um, I believe, I think, oh, I think this is the case, he was the favourite scientist of Albert Einstein because Albert Einstein actually had a picture of this man, Faraday, in his office um, or a poster or something on his wall, something like that, a picture on his wall, I think. He's a great scientist, British scientist, and uh, yeah, I read a book on him, and I was fascinated. And my mum actually gave me the book because she was into physics when she was younger. Um, so she she gave me the book, and uh, yeah, I read it. I was fascinated by him. He was a great scientist, and he, like I say, he discovered electromagnetic induction, which is the principle upon which all turbines work, and he discovered electromagnetic rotation, which is the principle upon which all electric motors work. And uh, without that man, humanity, well, you wouldn't have electric in your house. That's for, that's for starters. He's a very, very important man in science. And uh, he's been a big inspiration to me. And he, he was actually a self-taught scientist. So, like me, I'm a self-taught scientist, I suppose, doing experiments like this. And um, the way he would work, he'd develop a theory on paper, he'd develop a theory, um, pen and paper, and then what he'd do is he'd build cheap, cheap experiments like this. And obviously many of them would fail. As I've, I've found with my experiments, many of them have failed. But um, he'd build cheap experiments to try to prove or disprove his theories. And I think that's a really great way of doing science. Rather than just doing theoretical physics, he did, he did theoretical physics and experimental physics. This is experimental physics. And uh, yeah, yeah, I've, I've just basically copied him was what I've done. Inspired by him and tried to uh, 
just copy his his way of doing things, his modus operandi, you know, his strategy of doing things. I've just tried to copy. There's another great scientist called uh, William Sturgeon. And he discovered the electromagnet. The electromagnets are very important because that's why um, it's a spinning electromagnet that creates electric inside of this turbine. The question is, how do you spin that electromagnet? And I believe the answer is with an electric motor, electromagnetic rotation to spin the electromagnet discovered by William Sturgeon in 1825. That's how we're supposed to do it. I'm hoping this is a big discovery. I'm hoping I've made a big breakthrough for the human race here. This most important video, if, well, if I'm right, that is, if I'm right, this is the most important video I'll have ever made, by far, trust me. Because solving energy production is a huge, huge issue. Because this is this is green energy, you know. This isn't this. We're not. There's no. There's no fossil fuels being used. There's no damage to the environment being done. It's green energy. And uh, well, we need we need a breakthrough somewhere. They're trying to do nuclear fusion reactors. So we've got nuclear fission reactors. That. Um, produce energy but they produce radioactive waste they use a, a limited finite fuel in um, uranium and plutonium that's going to run out eventually uh, you can have you know Chernobyl you can have a meltdown like Fukushima they're trying to do nuclear fusion reactors but I've looked at how they work the tokamak and I'm not convinced they're going to work I'm really not, you know, in terms of making net positive energy, I, I'm not convinced. I think this is the way to do it, which is far simpler and far easier. Simply to just bolt the electric motor to the to the drive shaft of the uh, turbine or multiple turbines. So I mean, it might get better reading than uh, twelve point seven seven. We'll see. Hopefully, that was a first reading. Second reading. Twelve point seven eight. So we're slightly up again. Test it again. Twelve point seven eight. 
12.78. Might be worth letting it run one more time. Got another test. Okay. I think that might be it, but we'll let it run one more time in 10 minutes. We were very close. I see um, before the test, you know, we're talking tiny differences here. Tiny differences between 12.83. You know, we're talking 0 0.05 of a volt that we're off. We're very, very close. That was the third reading, wasn't it? You might find if we came back tomorrow, it would be back to 12.83, but there's not, a, there's not a huge difference between this reading and this reading, yet we were running that electric motor all that time, 15 minutes, and two electromagnets. The turbine was obviously firing up the uh, wind charge controller that was then topping the battery back up. So it's pretty close. I wouldn't be surprised if you came back in a few hours, tested it, it would be 12.83. Such a small difference that is. Like I say, I mean, if you bolted, if you bolted this electric motor, the drive shaft to a cog, I'll, I'll do a diagram while we're waiting. Might as well. I might as well quickly draw up a little. Uh, a little diagram of what I mean. I'm drawing a diagram now. multiple turbines all spin up the same motor and do remember you know you can make turbines and motors huge we scale up in size So for example here, this diagram, you can see one motor, that's a cog, these are all cogs, motor, turbine, 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 could spin four turbines instead of just the one. Just cogs just spinning. And then you could maybe even put more turbines around that, so these cogs spin more turbines all off the one motor. And then eventually the motor would only be able to spin so many turbines, but then you just have another ring of electric motors spinning even more turbines, just making you loads of energy, loads of electrical energy. That's, in my view, that's how it's done. That's how, you, that's how, that's how we're supposed to do energy production in power stations and in cars, uh, trucks, you know, things like that. That's, in my view, how we do it.
If I am right on this theory, and I think I am, um, especially especially with this way of doing things, especially with what I've shown on there, with the multiple turbines spun up by one motor, um, what that would mean is humanity has actually had all the technology, all the parts to do this in terms of energy production since the 1800s. We've had all the technology to, to not... So, so what that would mean is that we wouldn't have had to burn all these fossil fuels. We wouldn't have had to do global warming. And, you know, polar ice caps melting and glaciers melting and things like that. It would have meant we'd had all the tech to do it. It was just what happened was we didn't think to bolt the electric motor to the turbine. To the electric turbine. We never thought to do that. Um, to try and create a net positive. And that's... If that's the case, if I'm right, then that is unfortunate, isn't it? Because obviously uh, we put a lot of carbon emissions into the atmosphere over the last you know, 150 years. We really haven't moved on since the steam age. Um, because we still use steam to spin our turbines in power stations. And I've, I've said it for a while, why not just use electromagnetism itself via an electric motor? Mm. Like I said, I think if you left the battery long enough, you give it long enough to rest, you would have a result where it's 12.83, I think so. 0 0.05 of a volt down ain't much, trust me. I'm hoping, you know, I, I mean, I think I'm right. I, mean, I, I kind of feel I've proven I'm right with this scientific experiment. I'm hoping this video doesn't fly under the radar and, you know, doesn't get noticed. Hopefully it does. Unfortunately then, my battery on my GoPro ran out. I'm going to test, test the reading anyway. Again, it's creeping up. You see that? 12.79. I'm pretty certain that would creep up to 12.83 again. So, I've lost my pen now, stupidly.
Just give it another little test. Yeah, 12.79, see that? So it's still down from 12.83, but not by very much. So 12.79, fourth reading. What I'll do is I'll, I'll come back to this battery. I'm doing it honestly. Let's turn the multimeter off. Um, and see if it, it does creep back up to 12.83. I'm pretty sure it will. Once it's given time to rest, it'll just creep back up. So it's been a few hours now. Um, so we'll test the battery again. Uh, 12.82. Oh, 12.83 slash 82. Um, 12.83, see that? 12.83, 12 slash, it's basically 12.83, see that? Yeah. 12.83, alright, okay, so it's basically back to where it was. So our reading now is, I'm going to say that's 12.83. So our before test was 12.83, and our final test, a few hours later, is 12.83. So the battery is still fully topped up. Yet we were running quite a lot of stuff. Electromagnets, um, the motor, the speed controller on the left was on. And obviously you had the wind charge controller, which is essentially just a battery, battery, battery charge controller. As far as I'm concerned, that's proof of net positive energy. That's how it's supposed to be done supposed to use an electric motor directly bolted onto the uh, spinning shaft of the turbine and that can easily be scaled up we, we can make huge electric motors um, we can make huge turbines and also you can easily connect a cog on the end to spin multiple uh, turbines, as I've shown here, have a cog on the end of the motor, spinning motor, spinning multiple turbines, and that could then spin maybe another ring of turbines, and then have you could have a ring of motors around that, spinning more turbines, just keep scaling it off. That's how we're supposed to produce energy. It's a way where you don't have to burn fossil fuels. You don't have to have nuclear waste. Um, you don't have to rely on a unreliable energy source like the wind or like solar. You know the sun because it's not always sunny. Um, obviously, there's night time as well. It's the way that we basically just solve the energy crisis. It might sound a bit fantastical. It might sound crazy. Dave Jenvis figured this out. Well, I've put a lot of work in over the last year. Over the last 12 months, I've really, you know, gone into my dungeon and really tried to figure this out, really um, gone balls to the wall on it, to the max, to try to wrap my brain around this problem and figure out a solution. Let's hope this video doesn't uh, just fly under the radar. Uh, I might make a few more videos talking about it. Uh, we'll see how we'll see how it goes. All right, that's my thoughts. That's everything I've got to say.